Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two, love that opening. Welcome to DBL. It is Tuesday, November 24th. Let me put my water bottle away since we all saw that. Nice job, Tori. All right, I'm sorry. I can't hide. All right. I am Tori. I'm here with Brandon and Lindsay, and let's get started. Actually, before I do, I have to say to Steve Gallagher, who's our audio person, it was his birthday yesterday. Oh. Okay, happy birthday. And I forgot yes. to say it, and he had it all prepared this song, so I just want to say happy belated to our Steve Gallagher. We love you. We love you, Steve. That's what happens. Okay. That's after dark. Wow, That's I love that. Dark. It is. All right. Well, we don't want to get into politics this Thanksgiving week, but the president is set to pardon a turkey or two. In the rather really weird, strange annual tradition, this year's birds are named corn and cob. <laughs> okay. And later today, the president will decide which bird will be spared or maybe both of them. Speaking of which, not sure if you heard, but the president did authorize the formal transition process to begin 
but he has not yet conceded to President-elect Joe Biden. So first, let's get to the turkey real quick. This started really in 1981 when Reagan pardoned um, a turkey. There's no aviary laws that he can actually do this. What do you think about the tradition, Linz? I've been waiting to talk to you all morning. <laughs> <laughs> because you, yesterday you went on a rampage about how elephants have all these feelings, a three-year-old brain, you did this before with pigs. So what do you think about turkeys? That's what I wanted to, like, are they grown enough to know? Like, I woke up, like, Colin, do you think the turkeys know that they're going to get part? have a free life and never be somebody's dinner? I would think so. They go to a child's farm. They're very affectionate turkeys, and a lot of animal rights people think that he should be pardoning both, and some presidents do. Do you think President Trump will pardon corn and cob? <laughs> Look, Ma, I'm talking about turkey pardons. <laughs> I've made it in life. <laughs> But no, I, look, this is one of those things. I, I just feel like this is so 2020 in the sense of, look, there has to be a winner. There has to be a loser. Ooh. You can't pardon both. There's no participation trophies in partying tur turkeys. This, whole this, is a, this could resolve in death. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, obviously we're not going to kill it. And I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to jump on this tradition because right now in 2020 with the holiday seasons coming, whatever makes you feel some sense of sense of nostalgia of your childhood sitting in front of the chimney with roast, roasted almonds and stuff. None of that happens. I don't sit in front <laughs> no. of a chimney with Why almonds. you watch the party? Why you watch the party? No, that's not a tradition. In I place. I've never enjoyed the uh, pardoning, but I do think the transition team is interesting. If you look at Joe Biden's cabinet, um, the upcoming cabinet, it is one of the most diverse we've ever seen. First black woman appointed to U.S. Uh, the uh, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. We have the first woman director of national intelligence. And John Kerry has been picked as a special envoy for climate change. Mm -hmm. and he will be part of the National Security Council. That's a big deal. That's never happened before. A huge deal. A Latina woman is, is running Department of Homeland Security, so that's a huge deal. And I also think that what he did is align himself a lot with um, President Obama. Yeah. And I'm looking at a lot of these choices and their people that ha names have come up in the Obama administration. So we'll see if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm happy right. that they're moving forward with the transition so that we can all try to figure out what's next because we need a lot of answers before the end of the year. Yeah, we need him to have that information. And just so you guys know, a lot of people are saying it's Obama's third term basically with the same people in it uh, but I think he isn't picking such progressive people perhaps because he needs to get confirmed by the Senate and as we know that's a Republican led Senate but if you're picking people from the Obama administration is that going to bring together the other side is that going to pull the other side because remember when Trump was 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 elected president everyone was about resist it was about not my president so what are you going to do or what is he going to do with his cabinet or his He's gonna bring administration it this way. to bring people from the other side over on this side so we can unite as a country. I think he'll go moderate, but my question is, is the progressives, are they going to be angry? So there's always someone who's going to be angry. Someone's always going to be angry. Someone's Someone's gonna be angry. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of annual traditions, First Lady Melania Trump welcomed the Christmas tree to the White House yesterday, kicking off the annual holiday celebrations. She looked very happy to take part in the tradition, which may be her very last, at least for the next four years. Do you all think that she's happy to be done with all of this. Yeah. I'm happy about that periwinkle coat right there. That's How a nice coat. I need that coat. You were looking know. at the coat. I was looking at the Clydesdales. I was like, wow, I mean, what an amazing horse. Well, she's never usually this smiley. I, I particularly have followed first ladies for a lot of times, and I don't think she's particularly been the happiest of first ladies. It might not suit her the most, but she seems really happy to sort of maybe move on to the next chapter. I just feel like, you know, it's kind of like when we talked about the first daughters a couple weeks ago. It's like this coveted spot that she maybe didn't directly ask for. But it's also, I think, looking back, going to be something that completely changed her life, gave her the opportunity to probably write several books after this if she wants to be part of several organizations. So I wouldn't look at the negative in this moment that you were the first lady that really didn't have to do go over the top and do so much over the last four years. You just had to kind of lay low and... Let the president take the lead. Take the lead, yeah. that's right. <laughs> All right, we're just days away from Black Friday, but this year it's going to look a lot different than in the past. No more long lines and being packed into stores like sardines. This year, the sales are almost entirely online, and for a lot of stores, Black Friday deals have already started. Also, most major retailers are actually going to be closed this Thanksgiving, giving workers a chance to be at home for the mm. holidays. Mm. But this brings us to another big question that everyone starts asking this time of year. What do you want for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa? And how do you answer? Do you tell people <laughs> what you want? Do you make a wish list on Amazon? Or do you prefer to be surprised? 
I have a s very strong feeling on this. Brandon, are you got, do you like to be surprised? I want absolutely nothing for Christmas. I've, I'm, I've, That's such a lie. As I've become an adult, I tell my parents, I tell my family members, do not give me anything for Christmas. You especially, would be so upset if you got especially nothing. Especially in 2020, when I still have my health, I have my family's health. But you're supposed I have to a say. job. Okay, I understand that, Tori. So if you're going to get me a Christmas gift, donate it to someone. Wow. Instead of spending that $20, $40, 100 yeah. if you really like me, um, uh, on me, give that gift or give that money to someone you're who okay really needs it. You're okay with not one gift. I don't want not one gift. I just want to see my family. Mm. That's Listen, it. You can get me a gift still if you planned on. I still will take the gift from no, you. No, no. I'm just letting you know. No. Well, <laughs> a listen. lump of coal will be in your stock. <laughs> That's how we started. That's how we're going to end this thing. Um, I, th I think that I don't like to tell people what I want, but I do want people to be a mind reader. I know that you're very specific and like, listen, I like this, but I like to give people several gifts. Yes. Colin, my boyfriend, gets very frustrated by that because some of the gifts may be like a Hanes t-shirt. Yeah, like the that. other ones could be Xbox, right? Oh. But I like to several things to be under the tree so it just looks like when we were kids, I want the same thing. Just like, I, try your luck. You know what I like. I want an away bag, an away roller bag. Wow. But <laughs> Well, wow. she's telling everyone. Okay, just letting the world know if anybody wants to get anything. Know Tori, Tori. I, well, Hanukkah's different, right? Okay. I celebrate Hanukkah. You get eight days, and you'd get, like, a little gift every day, like a pair of socks and stuff. So I like practical gifts, and I want to tell you exactly what I want, in what size, and what color. Is there something really specific you have on your list this year? I need a winter coat. It's snowing out. It's freezing. How I can you leave that up to your husband? No, no. I pick everything. I pick it down to the buttons. So you have to tell him that you want a winter coat. Cold. You have to tell them and him in the summertime because that's when it's on sale. Well, maybe, but I do. See? I do. Nobody buys Christmas gifts in June. No, but you can buy a big triple fat goose jacket in August for like. This is not 1995. <laughs> <laughs> FUBU collection. I don't know what you're talking about. Nobody's wearing that. They still, you haven't been to a Burlington Coal Factory in a long time. They still have triple factory. Okay, well, right. I got to go to Burlington, too. <laughs> got to go to Burlington. And we're now sponsored by Burlington. Well, before we go to break, this is something straight out of the movies. Wildlife officials in Utah were out counting sheep. I didn't know people actually did this from a helicopter. When they came across this, it is a large metal monolith out in the middle of of nowhere. It is buried deep in the rock. No one knows yet what it's doing there, but a lot of people are commenting that it looks like the black monolith in Stanley Kubrick's famous film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Don't touch it. <laughs> Leave it alone. This is don't touch it till 2021. This is 2020, I the mean, most cursed right? year in the history of years. A monolith. Do not touch in that thing. I agree. It's like when we open the Egyptians' tombs, and I'm like, don't do it in don't. 2020. You're cursed for the rest of your life. What do you think? I mean, that's insane. How big is that? Like, what's the? Is it? I don't know the size. Like, if it's like a, a small scale thing. thing. No, it's, it's large. I think it's over like five feet. But it's in the middle of nowhere. How did it get there? What's it doing there? The bigger question: How long into the social media influencers start? going Go up to it. her start taking pictures and you videos think? with it. Absolutely. I feel like I'm more practical. Somebody just dropped that thing there. Yeah, yeah. Someone dropped alien. it in the middle Come on now. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> All right, coming up on DBL, our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is back with tips on celebrating Thanksgiving safely in the middle of a pandemic. And the worst Thanksgiving side dishes are, oh, I love oh, that. No. That's my favorite. Don't get caught with one of these offenders on your table. I like the ridges from the can. That's my favorite. On the cranberry sauce. Yeah. Right? yeah. I like that.
Welcome back to DBL. All right, let's talk, okay? Thanksgiving is a holiday centered around food, but not all of it is out of this world good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's be honest. We all have dishes that don't make it onto our plate. So which Thanksgiving dishes are truly the worst? Chowhound, an online community for food lovers, released a list, and let's see if we all agree. Play along with us at home. Oh, I like this music, kind of jazzy right? and splashy. Up first, oh yeah, ambrosia salad. My mother-in-law makes it. I don't get it. It's I've never had this. It's got like, I don't understand. It's a southern tradition, usually combining canned fruit, coconut, mini marshmallows, with either mayonnaise Ew. or sour cream. Oh, that's terrible. Do not show up to the London household with Ambarosa or whatever the hell is. Ambarosa salad. <laughs> salad period does not belong Brandy in Thanksgiving. Spr Brandy Sprong says don't show up even with a salad to my Thanksgiving. Yes, exactly. Right. No room I don't want to really see mayonnaise on Thanksgiving. You've never seen it. I think it's the most disgusting thing in the whole oh world. I'm sorry God. if you make ambrosia. Next, we've all seen this at Thanksgiving. This is my favorite. It's that canned cranberry sauce. It comes out of a can with <laughs> <laughs> with the ridges that looks like the can itself. That's my absolute favorite. I think now I think about it too much. Like That's when I was younger, favorite. it was so delicious, but now I'm looking at it and I'm like, no, I need the How ridges. long has that been in that can and what type of preservatives are in I'm okay with it. Please write in hashtag ridges if you like the ridges. You like the ridges? I, I love cranberry. I love the ridges. I love it, the ridges. The turkey should be the side and cranberry should mm, be the main dish. No. That's a bold yeah. choice, sir. That's, That's being ridiculous. progressive. That's being progressive. I don't think so. The next one's very controversial and it's my least favorite of all. The sweet potato casserole top what? with even sweeter mini marshmallows. You know why I don't like it? The mush. It's the texture is no, just mush. that's the best dish. No, my mom and she's gonna be so offended by yeah. you saying Sorry, this. Susan. Susan Granger, this is her specialty, okay? Is and it? you are knocking it down right now. I think it's too mushy and too sweet. No, if you put raisins in it, you put a little honey no. and a little brown sugar in that's it with some almonds. You're putting too much stuff. It just sweet potato with the marshmallow on top is enough. I find that's really disgusting. Whatever you want, Lindsay. <laughs> I can't have my Thanksgiving Day meal over here. All right, well this one's for you because you don't like this one. I know you. Green bean. Casserole. It's a classic that's served in over 20 million Americans' homes, but a lot of people hate the mushy green beans with the congealed soup and the greasy onions. Love this meal. I like the crunch of that weird fake onion thing on the top. I like that I'm having a veggie. Kind yeah, of. veggie doused in. I don't care. It's green. That, no, that, that just means you don't care about anyone else that has to eat what? at that dinner. No one eats green bean casserole. I do. That's oh, the yeah, worst I agree. I don't like that. Oh, you don't like it either? No, only you. Okay, I'm okay. I'll trade you. Trade you. I'll bring <laughs> over my sweet potato. You bring that Give over. Give me ridges and green beans all day. Finally, a lot of people forego the main dish, the turkey, which for many folks end up being too dry and tough. Wait. Turkey. Listen, I I don't like turkey. I, I, I hate to be the one. I just what? go to Thanksgiving. I'll cook it, but I'm not like a turkey fan. A, a lot of people say that. I'm more of the ham guy, but if you're going to have turkey, you better have some good hot sauce with that. I also think stuffing is important to get the moistness. Mm. I need the moistness. But again, if you don't have the ridges, I'm out. When I cook <laughs> Thanksgiving myself from top to bottom, I cook chicken wings as my food. Wow. My, my, my that protein. shows a lot of personality. <laughs> I'm cla classy. Wow. Classy with a capital K. <laughs> Coming up on DVL, Dr. Coley with a K is back with important things we need to keep in mind this Thanksgiving while COVID cases continue to rise. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to DBL. Despite CDC warnings, 3 million people traveled last weekend. In fact, the TSA had its busiest weekend since March, and even more people are expected to travel this week for Thanksgiving and next month for the holidays. We have one of my favorite people on earth, Dr. Pyle Coley. She joins us now. So good to see you. I've missed you terribly. Uh, Doc, before we get to viewer oh, questions. I missed you too, Tori. See, she does like me. She does. Uh, what can we expect in December based on the travel numbers we're seeing now? Because it's not a great great uh, foreshadowing. Yeah, you know, all joking aside, I'm really worried about what's going to happen in December because we've had 3 million people travel just this weekend. So in about two weeks, we're going to see a huge surge in cases. In about three to four weeks, we're going to see the hospitals and the ICU get to capacity. We're already busting at our seams when it comes to testing. So imagine what's going to happen in a month. And contact tracing, we haven't even been doing. So imagine doing that for all these millions of people flying in and out of airports. Mm. So I, unfortunately, I fear you guys that the decisions we've made about this holiday are going to to impact our ability to be able to travel to celebrate the future holidays in December. Wow, that's the wow. truth. Truth telling. Well, Dr. Coley, we have a question from Antonia. She asks, my friend is already arguing about masks. Should we wear masks the whole time if we're having visitors from out of town? What do you think? Antonia, yes, there is absolutely no argument when it comes to masks. Masks protect you. They protect your visitor. Are they a pain? Yes. Are they inconvenient? Absolutely, yes. And in fact, I have to tell you a story. I did a TV interview last week, and then I went to the hospital to see my patients, like put on my mask and wore it the whole time, and I was so good. And then when I took it off, I looked like the Joker from Batman because my <laughs> lipstick had smeared all over my face. It's a constant struggle. And it it is a constant ridiculous. struggle. <laughs> you know, it takes your makeup off. Yeah. So, but I have to say that the style that I'm really dig digging is Brandon London. So if you go to his Instagram and you look at a photo taken by Lindsey Granger, you oh. will see a very cool mask style. Yep. And that's what I'm going to be sporting this Thanksgiving. So oh, corny, with all the details, I love that. The, the clear? Oh, yeah, it was with the clear, clear mask. One. Yes, clear. the reveal mask. Yeah. Yes, for sure. You can see expressions. You can see my nice lipstick. You can see everything. He said he was going to get me one, but I'm still waiting, Dr. Coley. <laughs> Hopefully you get one, too, for Christmas. For Christmas. For Christmas. Hey, um, I would love that. Th thank you. I like to be fashionable and safe at the same time. Now, our, uh, our next question, uh, Dr. Coley, comes from Angelo. He says, if I do leave town, what can I do to reduce the effects of travel and possible exposure when I get home? It's a great question. So when you come back, ideally you should quarantine for 14 days or if you don't have access to testing. But if that's not possible and you have access to testing, then at day five after you come back. So if you come back on Sunday, that following Friday, go and get tested with a PCR test. And if that comes back negative, then you can feel a little better that maybe you weren't exposed. But of course, you have to keep wearing those masks and staying away from gatherings, especially for those two weeks after to protect anyone else that you, you know, if you have acquired the infection to protect anyone else. Fantastic. And Thank just really you. quick, I want to say I was here in February. I never missed a day of the pandemic from the studio. And you were the, sometimes the only person I got to talk to, Dr. Coley. And I'm just very thankful for you because you made me get through February, March, April, and uh, you were the only one there for me for a long, long time. So I really, really, really appreciate it. And thank you. I'm very thankful for you this Thanksgiving. Let's all bow. <laughs> it was yeah. I'm right. definitely the thank, thank you, guys. I love you so much. We love you, too. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration is brought to you by...
Welcome back to DBL. Despite more people staying home during the pandemic, car accidents are on the rise big time. So what's being done to make the roads safer? Well, here's an inside look in our DBL road report. A new report from the National Safety Council shows a 20% spike in deaths across the country. The more minor crashes, those are actually decreasing, which is good. But we need to make sure that we're paying attention because the fatal crashes and the serious injury crashes are not down. Take a look at these states where deadly car crashes increased this year, especially in Vermont, where they're up by 91%. Speeding, not wearing a seatbelt, drugs and alcohol, and texting were all major factors this year. When you have to go to the waiting room and tell a family that you did everything you could to save their child, but you couldn't. It breaks your heart because it could have been prevented. So what is being done to help prevent this? Lots. When it comes to kids, Rebecca runs a program called Buckle Up for Life. She's partnering with Toyota to provide free car seats and hands-on installation training for parents. And get this, scientists at the Toyota Safety Research Center are actually spending hours this year studying teen drivers' behaviors. Ooh. I miss that completely. And coming up with new methods to understand how they handle the roads. And when it comes to older adults, Toyota is developing programs to help them too. With AARP, we have a program where it's ongoing driver training for seniors. Make sure they still understand the rules of the road. So even though it feels like fewer people are on the roads and staying home, think twice. We all need to do our part to make the roads safe again. There are so many programs out there to help educate you on road safety and driving skills. So to find the best one for you, please visit the link below. Uh, really important because they're up so high. We got a lot of comments. First off, Emma from Facebook. I love green bean casserole. Tori knows what's up. Hashtag ridges. 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> you totally made it a thing. Like, you made it a thing. <laughs> Christina says ridges, that's how you slice it. Um, and then finally, Kit says Tori Susan Rice was the first black woman UN ambassador. My apologies. Oh. This is the second. Thank you for that. DBL is new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow.